Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, the Best Gamecocks podcast on the internet. Today is Tuesday, February the 2nd, 2021. On today's show, we continue along with the season preview series for Gamecocks baseball. Today, I'm breaking down South Carolina's shortstops heading in the 2021 baseball season. I'll break it all down. Key losses, who's back, most approved, best overall. Season will be successful if and give my overall grade as we sit just 17 days away from opening day. Also, news and notes to get into that include Gamecock baseball, some football notes, uh, women's basketball moving up in the AP poll. We got a lot to get into here on a Tuesday, folks. It's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, Upstate Movers Group, superior moving service. They bring care and attention other companies can't offer because they're just too busy maintaining trucks and profiting off of them instead of focusing on service. Guys, service is what separates Upstate Movers Group from the competition. They're not a trucking company, by the way. They are a moving services company, and they're also employee-owned co-op. Their movers are paid twice the industry average, and everyone on the crew is invested in your success. They have dedicated professional crew members, and they also offer black glove service. They offer end-to-end packing services, custom crating and packaging for special items, and cleaning services as well. They are founded by Greenville Natives and University of South Carolina alumni guys, so a Gamecock-owned small business. They also offer 20 years of project management moving experience, and they can offer logistics and solutions that traditional moving companies simply do not have the skills for. Guys, whether you're in the upstate or across the state of South Carolina, if you have any moving needs in 2021, be sure to check out our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. You can find them on social media at Upstate Movers Group. And of course, if you have any questions, go to their website, upstatemoversgroup.com. That is upstatemoversgroup.com. Be sure to check them out and tell them Chris from the Spurs Up Show sent you. Let's get it. all doing well i'm chris phillips shows the spurs up show as always appreciate you all tuning in hope you're having a great week whether you're in the office you're on the commute you're at home you have the day off whatever it may be guys hope you're staying warm by the way i know the weather's been kind of uh kind of gloomy the last couple of days i don't know what the deal is we've had a lot of rain in the forecast as well but overall guys having a fantastic day hope you are all doing well and again like i told you guys before we sit now just 17 days away from opening day. And when the show is as baseball heavy as it is today, that puts a smile on my face. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Again, guys, if you're not familiar, we've been doing the season preview series. I've been breaking down each of the Gamecocks positions heading in the 2021 baseball season. Uh, we've already gone through basically half the infield. So if you want to go back onto those shows, you can hear those shows in their entirety. Been doing it the last two weeks. But today, we are focusing on the shortstop position for South Carolina baseball. We might as well title this the George Khalil show because really, guys, not not trying to spoil it or anything, but this really revolves around George Khalil, the man who will be manning the shortstop position in 2021. You take a look at the key losses, and they're not available. Again, like I said, George Khalil returning. It was actually supposed to be his senior year last year, but with COVID, the season getting canceled, all that good stuff, Khalil was one of those who is benefiting from getting an extra year and being able to come back. So he returns. I put Braylon Wimmer here as well. He can obviously play shortstop. You do have some newcomers that I do want to mention in Jalen Vasquez, who's a true freshman, and Michael Robinson, the JUCO transfer. Robinson, a really highly touted prospect. I really like, I was actually at the scrimmages Friday and Saturday, really like what I saw from Vasquez. Seems like a really good scrappy player, and I think a guy that can help you out there. But again, guys, overall, getting straight to the point, this position revolves around George Khalil. Old Georgie coming back for one more season, the Australian, the Aussie, coming back in 2021. Let's first start with most to prove, and I want to expand on George Khalil and the value he brings to this baseball team and why I think he's such a key piece to this Gamecocks baseball team. But I look at most to prove for this group. Again, I think you've got a very, very solid everyday player in George Khalil as your starter. 
but who is behind him or what is behind him rather. And I think Jalen Vasquez is a guy that I'm looking to see really, really step up uh, in the 2021 baseball season. Again, you've got your everyday guy and you're sacrificing a little bit of offensive production for a fantastic glove that Khalil provides. Could Vasquez maybe be that late inning substitution, that pinch hitter, that, you know, when his number is called, I really like, again, what I saw in the scrimmages. I think Vasquez has a really, really good game, really good glove, can swing it a little bit here and there. But again, the adjustment from high school baseball to college baseball, to the SEC, the best baseball in the entire country, is Vasquez ready to make that jump? And again, can he provide South Carolina with a solid backup option? Let's move into best overall. And again, like I said, without spoiling it, whatever, um, just getting straight to it. George Khalil, by far best overall. Again, this might as well, might as well be titled the George Khalil Show, if you will. Um, you take a look at the stats last year, and I, and I think they're really interesting. Because like I said, you actually, when you look at a guy like Georgie, you, you sacrifice, you know, maybe some offensive production for a really, really solid glove. However, last season... It's funny, the stats wouldn't necessarily tell you that because in 16 games, and he started all 16 games last year for South Carolina at shortstop, uh, hit 271, had a homer and 10 RBIs. Overall, a really solid piece at the bottom of that lineup. You know, normally hitting in the eight hole or the nine hole, really solid down there. But you take a look defensively and, and what George Khalil did um, in 16 games, guys, he had seven errors. A 892 fielding percentage, which again, you ask any great shortstop, any great defensive player, that's rough. I mean, that's rough. Just to, just to put it in comparison, guys, you know, when we had Bobby Haney on the show last year, he talked about his numbers and all that. I mean, he, he was finishing with nine errors in the entire season, and George Khalil had seven 16 games. And I'm not sure really, really what it was for Georgie or what was going on, but something – was just simply not clicking defensively. But he's your best overall. There's no question he's your best overall. He's a guy that's played some really, really big innings for you, has played some really quality baseball for you. Again, first things first, I love what he does in the field. He's a fantastic glove, smooth as all get out. I, as good a defensive shortstop since Bobby Haney for the Gamecocks. And I think with the bat, you've actually seen him get a little bit better. Again, hit 271 last year. And again, I know it was through non-conference and all that, but – did have some big hits for South Carolina. Uh, did come up in some clutch moments. And I think, you know, again, yes, you are sacrificing a little bit of offensive production uh, for what his glove provides you. Because, again, I think last year was – I don't know what it was. Maybe Georgie putting too much pressure on himself. And really for him, it's funny. It's not the routine – or it's, it's, it's not the, the spectacular play that gives George Khalil the most trouble. It's the routine play. And, and a lot of times with a guy like that, and again, we talked to Bobby Haney last year. You know, Bobby Haney was a guy loved to come in and run in on the baseball, make the throw on the run. That felt almost more natural to him, he said, than just sitting there waiting back on the ball, patting the glove twice, and then going to first. I see George Khalil a lot in the same way. This is a guy likes to move his feet, likes to be moving. He loves that little that little throw on the run, like that exact same throw that Bobby Haney used to make. He loves to make that exact same play. And I think George might be one of those guys that when it's a ball hit right to him and it's a hard hit ball and he kind of sits back in the hole, if you will, at short, it's almost like it gives him too much time to think. I, I don't know if that really makes sense or not, but it's almost like it gives him too much time to think back there. But overall, you know, I, I know he had the seven errors through 16 games last year. I, I still really believe that George Khalil is one of the better defensive shortstops in this league. I think he's one of the better defensive shortstops uh, in the SEC, can, can hold his own with anybody. The question more so revolves around the bat. What do you get from George Khalil offensively? I, I think he can be that really, really nice piece in the eight hole, in the nine hole for South Carolina. Because, again, it's not like this dude is an automatic out. He's not going to have the pop of a guy like a Malone or even a Wimmer or a Wes Clark or an Eister or a Brady Allen. He's not going to have that type of pop, but I think he can give you a guy at the bottom of the lineup that's going to be a really, really tough out for you. And he, listen, the biggest thing is this in baseball. When you're trying to determine roles, whether it be position players or pitchers or what have you, I've talked about this before. You want a guy that is steady, eddy, consistent. You know exactly what you're getting from him each and every single time he comes out to the ballpark. And I think George Khalil is the epitome of that. It's going to be the same swaggy dude that's stepping in the box, the same swaggy dude that's playing in the field. His demeanor honestly really never changes, which I, I think is really, really impressive. Because again, he's had some highs, he's had some lows, like most of this baseball team has. 
But George Khalil is a dude you can roll out there every single day. You can roll out all three games on a weekend. You can roll out there in the midweek. And he's going to give you basically the same exact George Khalil um, type of ball game. Really, really good defensively. Going to give you some tough ABs. Again, he's not going to hit 350 or anything. But George Khalil guy, I think that at the bottom of the lineup can give you a tough stick. He can give you a tough out at the bottom of that lineup. Let's move into, guys, season will be successful if. And, yeah, you guessed it. It revolves around George Khalil. For me, the season will be successful if George Khalil can hit 270-plus. And I, maybe that's asking a lot. Again, I know he was hitting 271 when the season was called last year, and South Carolina had not played an SEC game. Was hitting 271. But if he can hit 270-plus and make less than 10 errors – I think that would be an outstanding season for George Khalil. I, I mean, I really, really do. I think that would be a phenomenal season. And again, I'm almost focused more on the defensive side of things. Yes, it's all about hitting in college baseball. It's all about offense. You got to be able to hit, but you got to be able to play defense too. And, and a guy like George Khalil is just simply too good to be in the position he was in last year where he had seven errors through 16 games. I think you'll see that fixed. I don't think you'll see that type of defensive performance again. I think George Khalil will have a much, much better season again, his final season uh, in Columbia. So if George Khalil can find a way again to hit 270 plus, less than 10 errors, I think Mark Kingston and that entire staff and that baseball team would sign up for that every single day of the week. All right, let's move into overall grade for the shortstops, and like I said, we might as well just label this the George Khalil show, but uh, it really revolves around him. When you have a guy like George Khalil coming back, and, and that's a dude that's again played a lot of great innings for you, played a lot of great baseball, um, you know, it should be labeled that way. I mean, this is one of the more proven pieces on your baseball team. I give the overall grade for the shortstops as a whole, though, a B. I, I, I give it a B. Again, if you ever wanted to switch things up, give George Khalil the day off. You've got a guy, like I talked about before, Braylon Wimmer, who is really, really versatile, gives you a big-time big time stick in the lineup and, and played well at short in his limited opportunities last year. And then the newcomers, Jalen Vasquez, Michael Robinson, two guys who I think are really, really capable, can fill in there if needed. But again, this position centers around the Australian. This position centers around George Khalil. I give the overall grade, like I said, a B. You sacrifice a little bit of offensive numbers for the defensive prowess, the glove that he gives you at shortstop. But overall, I'll say this. Is George Khalil going to be a 350 hitter? No, he is not. Is he going to hit double-digit home runs? Most likely he is not. But I think he fits in well with this baseball team. Like, I think he fits in well in this Gamecocks lineup. And again, you could do much, much worse at the shortstop position than what you have in George Khalil. Again, I, I think he's a very, very solid player. Again, he reminds fans a lot of Bobby Haney. He reminds fans a lot of that type of player. Bobby was no, you know, wasn't some crazy slugger in his own right. Again, all due respect to Bobby. I know he hit over 300 in the SEC one year. But uh, their styles are very, very similar. Great in the field, great gloves, kind of a mixed bag at the plate. But overall, again, I, I think George Khalil can provide you a solid stick in the nine hole. He's going to see a lot of pitches to hit going to see a lot of fastballs opposing teams and opposing pitchers aren't going to be thinking much of it and I think he can take advantage for you there in the bottom of the lineup and then like I said the glove the glove speaks for itself I know he had seven errors through 16 games but I think you're going to see that this season George Khalil is one of the premier defensive shortstops in this league I think you'll see that all season long so again I give the overall grade for the shortstops a B. All right, let's move into some news and notes really really quickly uh kind of a brief Tuesday show if you will but hey right to the point, no fluff, and we got to stick on the baseball side of things because, guys, I am freaking fired up about this announcement on Monday. First things first, it started with Mark Kingston teasing it, saying we have a non-conference series added two decades in the making, and if you notice when the, the, the Gamecock baseball schedule or the non-conference schedule came out, March 12th through 14th was – an open weekend, and Mark Kingston had said they were looking for um, an opponent, right? So as soon as Mark Kingston put that tweet out, I thought to myself, okay, what could be a big enough matchup to where Mark Kingston's tweeting about it, and who's a team we haven't played in two decades? Guys, my mind literally, 2002 South Carolina, Texas. It literally went to Texas. I was like, okay, let me Google Texas's baseball schedule and see if they have that weekend open. Sure enough, I Google it. They haven't set their non-conference schedule yet. I literally put up a tweet, and I'm like, if I had to guess, it's going to be Texas. I press send. 
refresh my feed. Literally the next tweet is Kendall Rogers from D1 Baseball confirming from his sources that it is going to be South Carolina, Texas. So it kind of crazy how that all happened. But overall, I'm so fired up again. March 12th through 14th in Austin at Texas, South Carolina, Texas, a rematch of the 2002 College World Series final when Texas beat South Carolina. And guys, this was back, by the way, when it was only one game. It was only a one-game series, and Texas got the better of South Carolina. They'll also play 2022 in Columbia. So a home-and-home home series with South Carolina, Texas. Guys, I, I, I am just giddy. I am giddy about this news. And I think not only, you know, I, I'm so excited. This year has reminded us of the importance of saving for the unexpected. And as a bank, our job is to make that a little easier for everyone. That's why at Huntington, we're so proud to introduce Money Scout. It analyzes your checking account to find money that's not being used and moves it to your savings automatically. It's that simple. So you can always be saving, even now. Learn more and enroll at Huntington.com slash Money Scout. Huntington, welcome. Money Scout is subject to eligibility, terms and conditions, and other account agreements. Member FDIC. Excited for the fans in Columbia and Austin, but also college baseball. I mean, this is, this is, if you're a fan of college baseball, man, I mean, what a treat this is. I mean, two historic giants in, in the game of college baseball and, and two programs that, again, I think are on the rise. You know, Texas right now is a top 10 team. They were ranked ninth in D1 baseball's preseason top 25. South Carolina right now sitting at 18th. Um, what more could you ask for? I mean, honestly, what more could you ask for as a college baseball fan? And it's just crazy though. that first month for Gamecock baseball, we are going to know by the time we get to April, we're going to know everything we know about this Gamecock baseball team. Because again, March 12th through 14th, South Carolina is going to travel to Texas. The very next weekend, South Carolina travels to Vanderbilt, who is a top two or three team in the entire country. And then the following weekend has the Florida Gators. So, you know, <laughs> put your big boy pants on. This is why you play the game, though. Those guys in that locker room, those guys in that roster, from people that I talked to, they said those guys were really, really excited about this announcement playing Texas. This is why you play the game of baseball. This is why you, you come to a school like South Carolina is to have the opportunities to play in a series like this one, South Carolina traveling to Texas. And then 2022, like I said, Texas making the trip to Columbia. It's going to be a ton of fun. What a fantastic series. And again, how lucky we are that, that we get to take this in and watch it. And man, I'm just wondering, can I get down to Austin and watch this thing? I, I, I'm not even joking, man. If it's possible, I might have to make the trip to Austin. That seems like a once in a lifetime type of opportunity. Um, all right, let's move into some football stuff really quickly. Drew Hickson named assistant director of player personnel for Gamecock football. Uh, Shane Beamer, obviously staying very, very busy in regards to hiring assistants. Of course, we all know there is no um, there is no running backs coach as of right now. So obviously we're all keeping an eye out for that. But Drew Hickson named assistant director of player personnel. Also it was announced on Monday afternoon that uh, Keel Pollard will help Justin step former game Cox tight end. Keel Pollard will help Justin step uh, as, as a, I guess an assistant wide receivers coach, if you will. So again, I think that's a great move. Keel Pollard's a really light, well liked guy had a great career in Columbia. Great to keep him around um, on the staff. And but last thing guys, Give a shout out, women's basketball. The AP poll coming out on Monday. They were ranked number two in the AP poll this week, moving up in the poll. Got some big games coming up. I think it's next Monday. They have their game with UConn, and I'm pretty sure it's at UConn. So, you know, I, I know UConn, I don't think they're quite as good as they normally are. I know they just lost to Arkansas, but hey, anytime South Carolina and UConn play in women's basketball, that is a big time matchup. So, again, guys, appreciate you all tuning in. Great stuff. Here on a Tuesday, again, guys, just 17 days away from opening day. I can't wait, guys. I, I'm telling you, like I said, this is one of my favorite times of the year. In, in, in 17 days, it's going to be one of my favorite times of the year because when basketball and baseball cross over and we're talking both sports and we got spring football that'll be coming up, content bleeding out of the eyeballs, which means, hey, more great content for you guys, which means – I, I just get to get after it. I get to do what I love to do. And again, you guys get more great content. So, I mean, hey, it's a win-win scenario for everybody. But again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, big time show tomorrow, National Signing Day. So we've got National Signing Day. We've got South Carolina, Florida basketball. Um, we'll have more baseball preview st stuff, of course, going throughout the week. But a big week this week, guys. Again, thank you so much for the love, for the support. I also want to say really, really quickly, I forgot to say this on yesterday's show. Thank you guys so much for making January another huge 
success. We did not break the record from December in regards to downloads, which is fine. I didn't expect us to. Um, obviously, with the football stuff and the coaching stuff, December's numbers were through the roof, incredible. But a great month in January, we finished up. If you guys want to know, we finished up at 33.5 thousand downloads for the month of January. So, hey, anytime you're averaging over a thousand downloads a day, that's pretty damn good. So, guys, again, I, I just want to show my gratitude, my thanks, and appreciation to you all for everyone that takes time to consume the content, share the content, show love to the content. Thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. Seriously, again, hope you guys have a great day. Have a great Tuesday. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Afternoon. Would you like to try a free sample of our double fudge brownie? Oh, sure. Mmm, that's very good. I I'll just take one more, just to be sure. Yep, still very good. Some things never change, like never being able to take just one free sample. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Mmm, is that macadamia nut I taste? We take one more. Sir, mmm. I thought so. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. This year has reminded us of the importance of saving for the unexpected. And as a bank, our job is to make that a little easier for everyone. That's why at Huntington, we're so proud to introduce Money Scout. It analyzes your checking account to find money that's not being used and moves it to your savings automatically. It's that simple. So you can always be saving. Even now. Learn more and enroll at Huntington.com slash Money Scout. Huntington. Welcome. Money Scout is subject to eligibility, terms and conditions, and other account agreements. Member FDIC.